Hello, and welcome to the Verification Academy. My name is Tom Fitzpatrick, Verification Evangelist here at Mentor Graphics, and this course is Advanced UVM. This course will consist of 10 individual sessions, beginning with this one, in which we will cover UVM test bench architecture. Let's get started. When we think about verifying a particular design, there are certain things we need to think about. The first is we need to think about the interfaces we're going to use to communicate with the design. For each of those interfaces, we need to think about how the interface works, what information is being transferred across that interface. Are there any variants of the transactions that are occurring at that interface? Is it unidirectional, bidirectional, pipeline, those sorts of things. Then we need to think about the actual design itself. What is the design supposed to do? What are the use cases? What variants is it going to be dealing with? And what type of stimulus do we need to create in order to exercise the functionality to make sure that the design is doing what it's supposed to do? We need to be able to represent correct behavior in the test bench. We want the test to be self-checking, so the test bench has to include information about correct behavior. And we want to think about what type of functional coverage we're going to need in order to know that we've actually exercised the DUT in all of the different modes that we'll need to have it run. When it comes to interacting with the DUT, in UVM, we create this thing we call a UVM verification component. It's sometimes called an agent. There's typically one per interface to the DUT, and it includes a driver whose job it is to communicate at the signal level with the interface. We want to do most of the operations, though, at the transaction level, which is the level that we actually think about what's happening. So we'll talk about transaction level modeling in session three, but for now, just think of transactions as units of information that we use to communicate between components. So the sequencer's job is to send stimulus at the transaction level to the driver, and that transaction is what we call a sequence item. So the sequencer sends the sequence item to the driver. The driver takes that transaction and then converts it into pinwiggle activity to the DUT. We also have a monitor connected to the...